Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Honorable Chancellor, Mr. Masood Jabbar, distinguished guests, faculty and students. I'm very happy to welcome you all to the 13th Convocation of Lums. This is a time for annual reflection on where we are and where we aim to move. Dear graduates, as you would have been taught here at Lums, one of the key words for the new millennium is globalization, meaning thereby that as the world expands, it becomes smaller and smaller, in the end becoming one village. On the economic front, the rules of this village will be increasingly defined by the WTO, the World Trade Organization. But just as the politics of globalization are not without controversy, so will the economics of the WTO entail hardship for less developed economies like our own. The challenge for all of you, indeed the challenge for all of us, will be to define a place for Pakistan in the political economy of globalization. Lams continues to be the first choice of students who wish to pursue their studies in Pakistan, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Though our total intake is over 300 this year, and the student population is over 900, of whom about one third are women, we meet only a small fraction of the demand and need for quality high higher education. Pakistan requires many more institutions like this one. The only way Pakistan can break out of its present economic problems and mass poverty is by having quality education for all who have the ability to learn, and by, by the term ability, I mean not financial, but academic assets. Unfortunately, regime after regime that we have had in Pakistan in the past 53 years has not given due importance to education. Higher education especially has been grossly neglected. You can only have quality higher education if the secondary and especially the primary education is of acceptable standard. If we were spending more on training of teachers right from the primary to the secondary level and up to the university, we would not be in the present state of the half literate nation. We need to give this critical issue the highest priority. God, thank God the distribution of ability and intelligence is not confined to the privileged. We have seen time and again that some of our very best people come from what we call Chatai schools. We have to provide them the opportunity to compete and get access to the best this country has to offer. At LAMS, we have made an effort to address this issue so that the students who are studying in non-elite schools can be admitted here. We have a scholarship program which provides support on a need basis. The challenge to the aspirants who wish to gain admission to LAMS is that they have to have the merit to benefit from these resources. May I offer my hearty felicitations to the graduating classes and their parents, relatives and friends who are here to celebrate this happy occasion with us. We are all very proud of your achievement. I'd also like to thank and pay tribute to the faculty without whose commitment and hard work we would not be able to impart the quality of education which these fortunate graduates have been able to acquire. LAMS has so far graduated over a thousand alumni over the last 14 years and they are all making a difference on the business scene of Pakistan. Most of the graduates work for multinational and large companies, while a few have taken on their family business. A few others have established their own business. I'd very much like to see more of such enterprising young business aspirants. I think there is a tremendous opportunity, especially in the IT sector, which these high-tech high graduates 
can meaningfully explore in this regard. I'd like to mention that we are in the process of launching in Lahore a chapter of the Indus Enterprise based in the United States. This will not be a part of LUMS, but an independent program from which LUMS graduates could also greatly benefit. This organization, TIE, the Indus Enterprise, has been established by successful businessmen of the subcontinent origin who have made good in the Silicon Valley. This organization is a means to provide support to would-be entrepreneurs. The Lahore chapter will be inaugurated, inshallah, on February 19. Next month, in February, LAMS is organizing a conference on redefining higher education in Pakistan. Besides participants from abroad, including the co-chairs of the International Task Force on Higher Education and Society, whose report has been launched internationally, education experts from Pakistan will participate in this two-day conference. Taking the deliberations of the conference as a starting point, which is planned to produce a report on strategic initiatives for revamping higher education in Pakistan. Our Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Vaseem Azhar, has, for personal reasons, resigned from LAMS and will be returning to the United States, from where we persuaded him to join us in 1987. During his 14 years at LAMS, first as a professor and later for 11 and a half years as the dean and the head of the academics, he made invaluable contribution towards the development of this university. During his tenure as the dean, the university student body expanded from under 100 to 900 and from a single program to now multiple programs. We wish him well in his future endeavors and I'd like you to join me in saluting him for his services to LAMS. Information technology is revolutionizing all aspects of life. LAMS now has a computer for every three students. Hopefully the day is not far where every student will have a computer. This technology will provide Pakistan an opportunity to leapfrog from the 19th to the 21st century, provided we invest more in learning and not just in buildings and hardware. An aspect of information technology which needs our careful consideration is the great demand for professionals in the field. We need to produce quality professionals in sufficient numbers to meet our growing indigenous requirements while allowing for some who will go abroad. To tell us about information technology, we could not get a better guest of honor than Mr. Masood Jabbar, Executive Vice President Global Sales Operations of Sun Microsystems, California. Before heading the Global Sales Operations, he oversaw Sun Microsystems' multi-billion dollar network computing systems business with worldwide responsibility for all aspects of developing, manufacturing, marketing, and selling high-performance workstations and servers. Pakistan is proud to have the son who has made good in a very competitive environment. We will all benefit from his address, Mr. Masood Jabbar. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, Mr. Pro Chancellor, President of Pakistan, honorable members of the dais, and most importantly, you, the graduates. Congratulations. I'm delighted and honored to be here. I'm surprised how somber this event is. Nobody's smiling. 
This is a reason to celebrate and everybody has this look on their face. So allow me to bring some of this tension down. This cap is really very uncomfortable. But thank you for having me here. I can congratulate all of you on a fantastic achievement. This is a launching pad for what most of you will experience as long, prosperous professional careers or entrepreneurs that LUMS has prepared you for for the rest of your life. Thirty years ago, after graduating from, I am dating myself, am I not? When I graduated from Gordon College with a bachelor's in economics and statistics under my belt, I left Pakistan to pursue an MBA in the U.S. A lot has changed since then. In my days, there were only three basic choices students could make and have the blessings of their parents. You either wanted to be an engineer, a doctor, and if you couldn't do any of that, then you joined the military. <laughs> MBA was a relatively unknown area, and I thank my parents for letting me explore the world as I chose versus succumbing to the pressures of society and pushing me in a direction I had no aptitude for. Most of you know what it's like to complete assignments at the last minute. You students know it is pulling an all-nighter. Well, some things never change. When Mr. Barbarelli visited me in my office in August and asked me to be here You'd think I had plenty of time to prepare for this. And then I was reminded again in October when Professor Zahur visited me in my office in California, reminding me again that I have to be here. You'd think I have plenty of time to prepare for this. But old habits die hard. Here is my Masood Jabbar font presentation for you. I didn't even have time to keyboard it. But today I want to have, leave you with two, two things, if I may. I want to help frame how profound some of the changes that are taking place in our industry are going to be and how it will impact our day-to-day -day life. And secondly, I want to give you the benefit of my experience, not necessarily from how to do or what to do, but at least let you know what not to do. Because I have learned a lot from my mistakes. You enter the workforce at the right time, at the right place. We have now joined the network age. Pakistan, too, has embarked in that arena. Clearly, we are behind. But clearly, I see a path for us to catch up and make up for the injustice we, in our generation, have done to you, the students, because we did not give you a framework an investment that was required to build this country. You're on your own as you go forward because we let you down. Our generation clearly let you down. So as you enter this new world, remember things have changed a lot. What is interesting about this new network age is that work will go to people. People will not go to work. You don't have to get on a plane and go work in Silicon Valley. You in Pakistan will command the same wages that your counterpart in Silicon Valley or in London or in New York City or in Tokyo will command. 
because you are now part of an elite core of distinguished knowledge workers. You claim a price on your knowledge that can be unmatched. I have seen graduates from LUMS in the U.S. being very, very successful, more successful than graduates from colleges that some of you aspire to go to. You have been trained well and you've been equipped well. My tribute to the people who are responsible for your growth and your education in this great institution. LUMS has truly become a world-class institution. This is the only institution in Pakistan that would be recognized by any company anywhere in the world. There is no other institution. <laughs> there has never been a better time to make a difference, a huge difference. Never have we seen a more exciting and promising time to be in business than today. This incredible new medium we are consumed with, the Internet, is having and will continue to have a profound change in everything we do. The way we manage our business, the way we run educational institutions, the way we manage our airlines, our, run our homes, and it will touch the personal fabric everything in our life. While you were asleep last night, in the past 24 hours, there were 150,000 new users that signed on to the internet. There were 2 million more web pages that were created. There were 200,000 new devices other than PCs that were web-enabled. America Online, which is one of the largest service providers, I guess, in the, in the world today, has more viewers than CNN. It handles more mail, electronic mail, actually two times the electronic mail than the U.S. Postal Service. Now think about the impact. There are today about a million Postal Service workers. They operate 200,000 vehicles, roughly 2,000 aeroplanes, and God knows deal with how many dog bites every day. You know, people worry about the digital divide. I urge the members of the government to recognize that nobody is going to be sending mail through the postal system. I don't remember the last time I wrote a letter. It is an archaic concept. Have we thought about what will happen to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of workers in that system today? And what will we do to reprovision them, retool them, to make them productive people of our society? There are very, very profound changes that are going to take place here. A company like Amazon.com, I'm sure all of you have heard of that, in three years reached revenue volumes of $500 million. One website, one warehouse. And it had global reach. I spoke at the World Economic Forum in Durban earlier this year and in an e-commerce um, section of that uh, conference. And there were members in the audience who told me that it was easier to buy a book in Durban, South Africa over Amazon.com than their local bookstore. That is how far-reaching your enterprise can be. You can become global instantaneously. There is no reason on earth why the next Amazon.com cannot be formulated here right here in Lahore, Pakistan. The nearest competitor to Amazon took 15 years 
to get to $500 million in revenue. That is the impact of time. Time has become the most important currency of this decade. Within the next few years, everything with a digital heartbeat will be connected to the web. Your television, your cellular phone, your pager, your automobile, and your refrigerator are connected today. What is next is your light bulb, your thermostat, your garage door, your home lighting system, your music system. I see a time within the next 36 months whereby as your car approaches your house, your house will recognize it. The gates will open. The lights will come on. Your heater will go on. And yes, your favorite brew of tea will be waiting for you. That time is not that far off. I know companies that are making it happen today in labs. So think about what will happen. There will be more IP addresses than people on the planet. IP, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's the Internet Protocol, and every device on the Internet must have an address. I have seven addresses today. Now, granted, this is a little frivolous. I, I accept that, but I work in the technology arena, and I like to play with toys. And I have seven unique toys that I access the Internet with. From my Palm 7 to my cellular phone, to a Java ring that I wear. Unfortunately, I'm not wearing it because I can't access anything from here. But my identification is carried on a ring I wear. And everywhere I go in my office, all I have to do is put my ring on the door and the door opens. It is activated by Java. But think about the possibilities of what things can be. So we are sitting here in Pakistan, preparing for the next revolution, having missed an entire century. The Industrial Revolution was very selective as to where it went. It confined itself to some European countries and the US. And it took a couple of hundred years to take hold. But even in 200 years, it bypassed us in Pakistan. The digital revolution does not recognize boundaries. We are entering a boundaryless world. It does not discriminate against geographies. It does not discriminate against physical assets or lack of physical assets. It is all about intellectual capital. It is all about what's sitting here. And I tell people what is sitting here is our oil, the natural resource. People say Pakistan does not have a lot of natural resource. Pakistan's biggest natural resource is sitting right here in front of me. You are the natural resource. Which will pull Pakistan up, out of this morass and make it, for those, of, those people who call Pakistan a failed state in the U.S., you will make it a successful state. We are counting on you. My personal advice to you, get to know who you are. You'll be surprised. This is my standard interview question when I interview people. I said, tell me one thing that sets you apart from the rest of the pack. You'll be surprised how many people don't know what sets them apart. Each one of us is blessed with a unique talent. But most of us never figure out till pretty late in life as to what is it that makes us tick. I call it a greatness button that we have deep inside us. And when we figure out how to push that greatness button in us, that is what accelerates us and propels us faster than our nearest competitor. That is what separates us from being a me mediocre person to being a great person. 
You are all winners. You are smart. You wouldn't be here if you were not smart. You are resourceful. And you have already separated yourself from the rest of the pack by just being selected at LUMS, and more importantly now graduating from LUMS. But I am talking about that oomph that sets you apart a little bit further. Do you know that the difference between, pardon me, I've lived in the U.S. for the past 32 years, so most of the examples I'll give you will be U.S. related. There's a race, horse race called the Kentucky Derby. The difference between the winning horse and the runner-up horse is measured in nanoseconds. Do you ever hear about what the runner-up horse was? The difference between the 100-meter race in the Olympics between the silver medal and the gold medal is measured in one hundredth of a second. Do you ever hear about the silver medalist? No. You only hear about that nanosecond advantage that you're looking for and that only comes to you once you discover your greatness button. That is the only way you get it because that is what sets you apart. So learn to call that in your hour of need. I learned this the, the hard way because once you know your greatness button you know how to see the possibilities. You know how to dream in color. <coughs> Too many of us dream in black and white. Very uninteresting. I was the chief financial officer at, at Sun and my CEO Scott McNeely asked me to run a fledgling operation that was in trouble. It was called First Person Inc. And there is, that is where Java was being incubated. It was codenamed Oak. I had no idea what it, it was. I was not an engineer. I'm not, I was not a software developer. But I was asked to go run this organization of really world-class software developers. James Gosling, you may have heard of his name. He's the guy who actually wrote it, was the distinguished engineer on it. He was on my staff. I had no idea what he was talking about, and he had no idea what I was talking about, so that sort of set us all in the right direction. But I never figured out what Java could be. I ran this operation for a year, and all I was thinking about was it was a way to deliver interactive content on your television. I could never figure out the possibilities of what Java could be to become the lingua franca of the internet age, the only way to deliver executable content over the internet. Thank God I didn't kill it because I was the CFO. I had that bent. Anything didn't make money in a year, you had to kill it. You know what? Nobody would have known if I had killed it. But one of my colleagues took me out for dinner one night in the Stanford University professors or faculty cafeteria. And we sat there and he, he finally got, got it through to me as to what this can be. I didn't have the, the honor of shepherding it through the rest of its journey when Java became absolutely ubiquitous. But I still wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night. I said, my God, I could have killed this thing. And it is frightening. So you have to, you have to take a look at what things can be. Not what they appear to be, but what they can be. I learned it the hard way. I probably cost Java six months in time to market. Thank God my CEO was a little tolerant of me. So please remember, when you look at things, don't look at what they appear to be, but what they can be. And that's one 
if there's one thing I can leave you with, is to see the possibilities and dream in color. Three final pieces of advice that I can give you if I may be so bold. Remember that character matters. No matter what you do, never ever break character. In order to be successful in whatever you do, your integrity should never be questioned. I have yet to see a successful business leader on a sustained basis, a successful government leader, or any successful leader without character. Pay attention to it. It is very, very important. A key skill to be successful. Secondly, have courage. The hardest management principle is courage. Courage to walk away, courage to call somebody, courage, courage to stand behind what you believe in. Courage to make a difference. Courage to know that when you are comfortable, that you're going downhill. Learn to be comfortable with discomfort. And that requires courage. Because comfort in your business career, comfort in your entre entrepreneurship is a liability. Shed it. You must change before you have to change. You never fix your ceiling or your roof when it is raining. It's too late. You must fix it before it starts raining. And finally, commitment. You never achieve anything in life without a degree of passion. You have to care about it and you have to be committed to it. You know, people come to me, the one thing I look for them when I, when I talk to them, do they have passion in their eyes? Do they really care about what they're talking about? Do they really care about making a difference? And I've talked to several government officials while I've been here for the last 48 hours in this country. Some of them do care. Unfortunately, some of them I fail to see the passion in their eyes and yet they hold some very key positions and it scares me. Passion is important for success, a key, key ingredient. College commencements are rites of passages and celebration. In this commencement, we, the graduates of the 20th century, pass the torch to you, the graduates of the 21st century. For all of you who graduate today, the world awaits the future, product of your intelligence, your enterprise, and your resolve. We celebrate your accomplishment in education, and as you begin your own personal marathon, you will encounter changes, choices, and consequences. All of these will define the kind of person you will become. Follow your heart, follow your passion, and create your unique destiny and life's great adventures. All of us wish you well. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala Rasulah al-Kareem. Mr. Pro Chancellor, Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, members of faculty, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. It gives me great pleasure to be here at the convocation of the Lahore University of Management Sciences. Convocation presents an important event in the academic life of a university and its passing out graduates. 
It is heartening to see just how much this young university has been able to achieve in a short span of time. The achievements of this educational institution are reflected in its policy of merit, integrity, synergy and team spirit. The graduates receiving their degrees today would enter upon their new careers with hopes of a better future for themselves and for their nation. Henceforth, hopes and dreams rather than fears of the future or nostalgia for the past should guide your actions for personal fulfillment and national development. Dear students, the world of practical life which you are now going to enter is not a bed of roses. To meet the difficult choices and challenges ahead, you would need strength of character, perseverance and true faith in Almighty Allah. Never forget that in Islam pursuit of knowledge is a form of prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoins upon the believers to act and live righteously, make proper and balanced use of one's faculties and the bounties provided by Him. Within this general concept, the Holy Quran lays down detailed instructions for fostering moral and spiritual values, the object of which is the beneficent and coordinated development of all faculties. With the grace of Almighty Allah, I see some of that nurturing and grooming being accomplished at institutions like LAMS. History reveals that every social order becomes static and lifeless when intellectual initiative and independent thinking become atrophied and people cling to outdoor ideas and forms. Hopefully, the ability to think independently and rationally is precisely what you all have acquired from the broad-based education that you have received here. The knowledge of diverse and wide-ranging disciplines being taught at this university will surely help mitigate the negative effects of excessive materialism and create a just and equitable society that Islam and Vians for mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, for establishing a healthy society, one must exercise his or her capacities and talents to promote individual and social uplift, keeping in mind the basic concepts and teachings of Islam. According to Allama Muhammad Iqbal, the social order of Islam must always remain responsive to the material and cultural forces that play upon it. He was most anxious that the future social order should be built on the broadest humanistic foundations. He points out that the social order of Islam finds the foundation of world unity in the principle of Tawheed. From the belief in Tawheed flows the belief in the unity of existence and brotherhood of mankind. Dear students, your stay in this institution must have imbued in you certain appreciable qualities and character traits like the values of persistent hard work and insatiable curiosity for knowledge in your respective academic and professional careers. The more knowledge you seek, the humbler you will become, for that is the hallmark of a true scholar. In short, you are now equipped with an education that is a befitting arsenal for your crusade against ignorance, poverty and other social ills. It is with enthusiasm and optimism that I look towards this dynamic and energetic environment to provide the kind of support necessary to building the future of our country. I congratulate you and your parents for successfully completing a very worthwhile part of your personal and intellectual journey through life. 
However, I reiterate that you owe a spiritual debt to your alma mater and you will only be able to dispense with the debt by taking constructive action for the moral and spiritual uplift of our society. We look towards you with great hope to make a difference in whatever field you choose to engage yourselves. It is pleasing to note that an appreciable number of girl students also figures in this convocation. Islam makes no distinction between men and women in seeking education. Rather, both are required to acquire knowledge as a religious obligation. I am confident that our daughter graduating, daughters graduating today would also play their due role in our national development efforts. In the end, I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. I am grateful to the University Administration for having invited me to this ceremony. Thank you, Pakistan, for